Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Weekly Academics and you're listening to Faiza Inamdar. And here I am back with the third podcast of the second chapter Rise of Indian Nationalism and the Formulation of Indian National Congress. And in this podcast as I mentioned in the earlier one we'll be discussing certain social religious reform movements and certain important people who played an important role. Um so in the previous podcast we discussed the repressive colonial policies and before that we discussed the ways in which India was economically exploited even after the war but in this uh, right now this part that we are going to deal with is not exactly post war part but these organizations or the various movements they started before the war uh, happened but these have played an important role in the post war period So without wasting much time let's dive into it we are discussing the social re- social religious reform movements so the first one will be the contribution of raja ram mohan roy who was born in 1772 and he was the one who thought of who heralded the coming of modern age in the indian history okay so he established a, a samaj or society known as the brahmo samaj uh in 1828 which was it was majorly a religious movement but not merely a religious movement under the brahmo samaj he also uh included programs concerning social and political reforms okay so let's see what was um raja ram mohan roy's approach towards religion because when we say brahmo samaj was kind of a religious movement what was his actual definition for a religion So Raja Ram Mohan Roy basically believed, was a humanist humanist okay humanist and he stressed on the unity of all religions he believed in unity of all religions so there were different concepts he liked about different religions like he liked the monotheism of islam the having of just one god there's just one god monotheism of islam he liked the ethical teachings of christianity he he praised the sublime doctrines of upanishads So all these from different kind of cultures different kind of religions he praised those concepts and he believed that every single religion if you study deep into it you'll find out that it is nothing but a set up moral code which is important for social peace and happiness so with this approach towards religion we move on to looking into what kind of social reforms did he want to take up so because he says that they, that's important for social peace there is another part required that is the reforms okay so under the brahmo samaj uh, raja ram mohan roy attacked the caste system a uh, practice of polygamy polygamy means a man is allowed to marry multiple wives right so he attacked that system he also attacked child marriage and the practice of sati so there are four major things caste system polygamy child marriage and sati okay So he started his anti sati crusade or you can say an anti sati movement in 1818 and in 1829 as we studied even in the first chapter that is the causes for uh, when we studied the causes for the war of independence we had studied that sati was banned so in 1829 the practice of sati was made illegal by the government in india okay he also protested against um the the practice of denying women the right to property women were denied the right to property only um, male progeny could uh, you know inherit the property women were denied that right so he protested against that also and he believed that um, social reforms are a necessary key for political advancement and for the happiness of people it is important to have or to change these kind of practices that go on to name some caste system polygamy child marriage sati system and the uh, women not being given the right to property okay now what were so when he says that it is important for the happiness of the people in political advancement of the people he also believed that liberty is an important um important key for the happiness of the people okay every person has a right to liberty is what he says so what were his views towards the liberty is rights and the free and press okay free press so raja ram mohan roy basically was one person who recognized the good that the british brought into india he recognized the blessings of the british rule he was a staunch nationalist he was completely nationalistic but he understood the importance of english education or the good things that the british had given to india okay good things that they gave to india to bring it to the modern world 
okay and but still with all these things being there he believed that liberty was a priceless possession is a priceless possession for every individual so he criticized all the practices all the measures that were taken that deprived the indians of their civil rights okay and talking about the free press uh, there existed many restrictions on the press and the publications of newspaper as we've already known okay so raja ram mohan roy started his own newspaper which was the Beng- which was a bengali weekly known as samavad komedi in 1821 okay and he also started a persian paper known as miratul akbar and in both these papers they both had a like a nationalistic approach a progressive and nationalistic character and along with a few other eminent people prominent people who took part who were influential people he also presented a petition in the supreme court to look into and take a legal action against the various press regulation okay so along with these what have we still seen his approach towards religion what he thought about liberty rights and free press and now let's look into his economic ideas okay so raja ram mohan roy was sympathetic towards the cause of the poor peasants okay he realized their distress and he wanted that the military budget should be reduced and more amount should be more funds should be diverted towards the welfare of the people health and education of the people so for this purpose he sailed to england in 1813 and he got the opportunity to uh, appear in a select committee in the british parliament okay select committee of the british parliament so when he got that opportunity he went there and he uh, informed the committee he made them aware of the poor economic conditions of the people in india and the distress of the poor people in india so with all these thoughts in his mind he ra- ran this brahmo samaj also and that is how raja ram mohan roy contributed in the social reforms okay now after raja ram mohan roy another important person that we going to discuss is jyotiba phule so jyotiba phule was born in satara in 1827 in maharashtra and uh, his family earned their living by gardening by growing flowers and vegetables so they were basically malis so we can get that from a surname phule phule means florist so he earned his living from gardening so they were not a high class person raja ram mohan roy was a uh, high class person but jyotiba phule was a lower class person and that is the reason why he, his main work was towards the lower class people also so he uh, was a very famous social reformer in the so- uh, 19th century so let's look into what he did first he worked for the upliftment of the lower caste okay so he talks about the caste structure to be slavery he talks about caste structure as a system of slavery He's also mentioned this in his book known as Gulam Giri in which he focuses on brahmin domination and the poverty hardship and distress of the lower castes what they were facing uh, he strongly felt that uh, the problems that dalits or the shudras and ati shudras were facing could be solved if they get proper education so he even worked in that field of giving them education okay so he's written a book known as gulamgiri which talks about brahmin domination poverty and hardship and distress of the lower class lower class namely the dalits shudras and ati shudras okay and when we say he worked for the education of these lower caste people he not, did not just work for the lower caste people but also for women so this brings us to the point of gender justice which he worked for so jyotiba phule basically believed that women were superior to men because they were the ones who bore the children and nursed the children okay. so he believed that men did not educate their wives or their daughters or any women in their family they did not want the women to be educated because if the women get educated they might question the dominance of men so therefore he worked for the education of women also how he established um, one of the first girls school in 1848 in india he also set up an orphanage in 1854 to provide shelter to poor uh, widows or children okay shelter to widows and children he also founded various number of girls school school for girls and the lower caste that is the mahars and the mangs these are also a type of lower caste group so he formulated schools for the lower caste for girls that's how he promoted education okay 
so how did he do this he did this with his wife and they both together formed a samaj an organization like raja ram mohan roy form uh, or, um, like started brahmo samaj jyotiba phule had satya shodhak samaj satya shodhak samaj so satya shodhak samaj was basically like a society of for seeking for the seekers of truth if you just translate it so he found this satya shodhak samaj on the 24th september 1873 and the main aim of the society was the the endeavor to mitigate the distress and sufferings of dalits and the women okay so his wife savitri bai phule you all might have heard her name his wife savitri bai phule was the head of the women's wing of the society so he had a complete wing for the women okay that's how he empowered the women also so he worked for education upliftment of the lower caste and empowerment of women okay so now just let's take a glance at to how he looked at the british rule how what was how did he characterize the british empire so like raja ram mohan roy even jyotiba phule uh, praised the british rule for giving indians the tools with which they could gain their independence with which they could fight social injustice and gain their independence okay so he praised the goods of it but still even though he praised the goods of the british rule in his book gulamgiri as we talked about it earlier he mentions that it is the farmers and it is the labor of the farmers on which the government the army the salaries and the pensions of all the white people is dependent so he states in his book and i quote i am quoting it okay when the farmers educate themselves and carry whips on their shoulders the english will have to scream and yell and flee the country unquote Okay, that's what Jyotiba Phule believed. So Jyotiba Phule established the Satya Shodhak Samaj, and he worked for the upliftment of lower class and empowerment of women in education. Okay, there were certain other uh, people also who played important role and contributed, played important contributions, uh, and there were other associations also. For example, Arya Samaj. So Arya Samaj was founded in 1875 by Swami Dayanand. and this samaj also opposed the caste system and encouraged female education remarriage of widows etc that was what this uh, samaj worked for there was another one that is the ram krishna mission you might have heard about this it was founded by swami vivekananda in 1896 this was after the war if you see 1896 1875 after the war but the contributions of jyotiba phule and raja ram mohan roy were something that happened before the war okay So Swami Vivekananda founded Ram Krishna Mission in 1896, and um, through this he established hospitals and orphanages to alleviate the sufferings of the people because he believed that service to mankind is equal to service to God. So these were the important contributions of uh, important people. As far as syllabus is concerned, majorly. Raja Ram Mohan Roy and Jyoti Ba Phule are focused on. So do them in detail. A question was also asked about the contributions of Raja Ram Mohan Roy in the paper of 2017. So these are important points to remember. Easy points just go in the flow of what they thought and out of their thoughts came their actions. Just follow that principle and it will be easy to you know know what they did. So yeah, that's it. and i'll get back to you with the next podcast that will be on the influence of western education and role of press in indian literature that we will be doing in the fourth podcast of the second chapter until then as i always say something that keeps me going on you can always listen to your life in my voice um it's available on youtube it's also available on spotify so go check it out if you want to listen to something relaxing soothing romantic beautiful and very just calming stuff and i'll get back to you soon until then you're listening to faza namdar at pk academic stay home stay safe be safe take care of yourselves bye bye